Hello, welcome to my masterclass. Today, we're talking about why Satan loves the loudest amen. Say it one more time. Why Satan loves the loudest amen. You see, I've been to multiple churches and you know, it's almost a universal uh, principle in um, particularly Protestant and Pentecostal churches, evangelicals. You know, you have pastors, prophets, ministers saying, uh, shout a loud amen. That amen is not loud enough. And you see, what we have to understand is that those who say the loudest amen don't get the fastest answer because God does not look at the volume of prayer. He looks at the volume of faith. So we need to stop telling our congregations that their amen is not loud enough for God. We need to raise their faith, not their voice. You see, the fastest prayer ever answered in scripture is the prayer by the woman with the issue of blood. And she did not even speak. She said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Matthew chapter 9 verse 21. See, God is not looking for loud faith. He's not looking for a uh, loud amen. He's looking for loud faith. Satan loves the loudest amen. Do you know why? I'll tell you. If you read 1 Kings 18, uh, 26 to 27, 1 Kings chapter 18, 26 to 27, you're going to have the prophets of Baal. In fact, I'll just quote that verse, those verses. It says, They took the bull, giving them, and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. Look at that word. Notice that word, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is in deep thoughts, or busy, or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. So you see, those who shout, those who believe in shouting, are not believers, are not uh, people from the body of Christ. It's the worshippers of Baal. And even Christ warned us about this behavior. If you read it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 to 8, you know those verses say, and I'm going to quote, When you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. So God is not looking for your words or your volume. He already knows what you need. He's looking for your faith. You see, God does not like noise. He likes poise. When you pray, don't shout. It's okay to talk, but you don't even need to talk. You can pray in your heart like the woman with the issue of blood which that I just read, to, uh, read uh, um, of now. But you see, a lot of people, they want to bring about uh, Christ and Lazarus. You see, Christ shouted at dead Lazarus. Your God is not dead. You don't need to shout at your God. Hannah did not shout during prayer. Scripture says, Hannah was praying in her heart. And her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 13. So, like I said earlier, it is the prophets of Baal. Those are the people who shout. The people, sometimes they bring up Paul and Silas and they say, well, Paul and Silas, they shouted, they prayed, and the Holy Ghost came down. You see, they are innocently misquoting scripture. That's not what that scripture says. If you read it, it says, Paul and Silas were praying. That's in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Scripture did not say that they were shouting. In fact, they were praying. They were in a cell with so many people. They were praying. They were singing. Obviously, people heard them, but they were not shouting. Christ did not say shouting moves mountains. He said if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will, and nothing will be impossible to you. See, that's Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Mustard seed is the smallest of seeds. You see, I don't know, like, and this is my opinion now, I'm not quoting scripture, but I think it is semi-literacy that makes a lot of these people preach these doctrines. You know, some of them, they mentioned blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verse 47. And I've seen this with a pastor that I was ministering to, and then he brought up, but he said, blind Bartimaeus shouted. No, no, no. Blind Bartimaeus did not shout when he was praying. Christ was passing on the way to Jericho. And I've been to Jericho. He shouted to get Christ's attention. And then Christ called him. But if you read Mark chapter 10, verse 51, when Christ asked him, what do you want? He did not shout. See, these things, if it's not semi-literacy, a lot of times it is mass psychology techniques. You know, there's a principle in psychology. It's called crowd psychology. You can Google it. You can research it. Crowd psychology. I was a former presidential spokesman, so I know a, a, a thing or two about crowd psychology. You see, it's a technique of crowd manipulation. 
to engage the crowd in order to direct their behavior towards a specific action. It's a form of mass hypnosis that makes people drop their guard, suspend their rationality, and render them more susceptible to the power of suggestion. Now you have to understand, religion is the opium of the masses. Faith is the product of godliness. It is the desire of Satan for you to see religion and faith as the same thing. But they are not. You see, without faith, it is impossible to please God. With religion, it is impossible to... With religion, you cannot please God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. But with religion, you cannot please God. So, you see, like people like Hitler, Adolf Hitler and Winston Churchill, they used all these uh, techniques. You know, like, shout, shout amen, shout amen. You know, if it, oh, that, that, this crowd psychology techniques, they were borrowed from Adolf Hitler and Winston Churchill. You know, when they get the people, the, heil, they will say heil, you know, victory for king and country. That's what a lot of, uh, a lot of pastors are using in their congregation to control them. What you need after a prayer is to say amen in a cool, calm manner. Just one amen. You know, I remember a pastor in California, I, I went and he invited me, and then when he was praying, he would say, in Jesus' name, and then, amen, in Jesus' name, amen. And when he noticed I wasn't saying that, he said, no, why are you saying, why are you not saying that? I'm the pastor of this church. I said, listen, Pastor Yemi, what you're doing is wrong. Now, you can do that with your congregation. I'm not going to contradict you with your congregation, but you can't tell me that every time you say, in Jesus' name, amen, in Jesus' name, you are controlling your people. You can manipulate them like that. But what you should do, you pray, and when you have finished praying, I will say amen in a small, still voice. You have to understand that because if you read scripture, it actually says that the Lord is in the small, still voice. Now, if you've watched this and you have questions, of course, you can send me an email, info at or you can just follow my YouTube channel. Subscribe to me, Reynolds Masterclass on YouTube. Talk to you later.